So now we'll talk about the ancient Egyptian religion, part of the Egyptians. Um, but I'd like to start off with something slightly different, which to me feels relevant. There's an article in the New Scientist in April, which was based on a, a conference um, in 2007 called, let me get this right, The Sapient Mind, Archaeology Meets Neuroscience. And obviously trying to do a bit of joined up thinking within science. And what they were looking at was how human beings have developed, how the human mind has developed looking at how, uh, archaeologically speaking, you can look at how uh, the physiology, the structure, the brain structure, the physical structure of human beings has developed. You could go back tens of thousands of years ago. Human beings, as they are now, Homo sapiens, appeared. But we didn't behave in the way that we do now. We didn't necessarily have language. We didn't have culture, we didn't have civilization, um, and we have a, quite a long period of about 140,000 years of human beings having arrived at what we physiologically are now, going through an enormous period of development. And some research has been done um, doing brain scans of archaeologists who are skilled in creating Stone Age type tools while they were making the tools. And they have discovered that the part of the brain which lights up when they are making the tools, working with them, planning how to make them, is the same part of the brain that creates language, or in which language works, language develops, part of the left temporal hemisphere. And it's also the part of language which they believe is connected with symbolic gestures which they believe may predate language itself. <coughs> so this, this is implying that you have a long period of development where the activities that are being carried out by human beings are leading up towards the development of language going through a number of stages, which include uh, physical activity, interacting with the environment, creating tools, planning, using tools and communicating, as it says by these symbolic gestures, before language itself appears. They're also talking about in this, this uh, conference how it is that at some point, hum the human development more or less exploded into modern activity, into human beings being able to speak, to communicate, to work together, uh, and to learn in a way that animals can't quite match. They they've compared uh, the the behaviour of chimps who can use very, very basic tools and the learning processes of apes, chimps and so on. And they're convinced that human beings can do something which those apes can't, which is teach their young. I'm not sure if I, I agree with this 100%, but they're, they're suggesting that animals learn by random, random observation of each other doing various things and that they might pick up on how to use a particular tool um, or they might not they're suggesting that whether or not they pick these things up from each other is as they as they say random now Eugene Halliday would say random means they haven't looked closely enough at the pattern to find out what it is random is apparent lack of pattern it just means they haven't looked closely enough. But what they suggest is that the animals haven't learnt to learn in quite the same way that human beings have. So we get to the point where human beings can create tools, they're beginning to get language, they can use symbolism, and 
environmental pressures are coming to bear on them. They're making tools, they're interacting with the environment in ways to make the most of them. Um, and they begin or they develop this ability to teach their offspring. And the idea in this, from this conference is that when people become able to teach and their offspring become able to learn, you get the development of culture and that different groups of humans start to develop different cultures. So within different environments, they develop different practices, different idea structures, and they pass these on to their offspring. So you then get differences of culture developing in different environments in different parts of the world. <laughs>